a lot of automotive guys out there uh, do rebuilds on their type engines. I uh, kind of wanted to show you what it looks like when you're pulling piston packs on a diesel engine and that you remove the cylinder, liner, and the piston all at once. And I'm going to show you how to do it on this video, so check it out. So here's the bottom end of the engine. We've got our main cap and a rod cap. This is for number two, as you can see. We're going to pull that off of there. Uh, of course, you got to loosen up the rod bolts. So they don't the gun, loosen them up, take them out. Uh, usually try not to spin that bolt with the impact real fast at the end because it tends to fling all that nasty uh, diesel oil all over the camera and like face. So I've got bolt number one out. And I'd normally grab that rod cap with the other hand, but I was holding it. And take the rod cap off. And we're going to inspect the rod bearing for damage or debris, anything like that. So here's our rod bearing. You can see it's pretty big uh, compared to the automotive ones. Uh, bearing looks pretty good. No base metal, no contamination. And let's look at the uh, tool. So this is the tool we're going to be using to pull the liner packs. It's a expandable rubber puller. So you put it down in the cylinder hole. It expands out, and then you pull the whole pack out. And this is a C11. It's an 11 liter, pretty much the same as a C13. And you can kind of see the liner, the cylinder liner, there, where it separates from the block. And it's awk. It's kind of like a press fit, but you got to pull this out of here using this tool. So you take the outer edge of the tool off, and then you got to get that that rubber in there. And it is a pain in the butt because the rubber is almost the exact same size as the cylinder liner. And when you go to put it in, the bottom of the rubber edges will kind of flare out and then get caught on the liner. So you usually kind of have to play with it for a, a few seconds before it'll seat in there. And once it does seat, it'll slide right in. And you'll see what I mean by the tight fit. Like, it's, uh, it does not fall right in there. So we got it started. Pushes right in, pushes all the air out of the cylinder. And it takes a special socket that's about 10 inches long to run that nut down. It's an inch and an inch. So tighten that, that'll expand out. It kind of grabs the sides of the liner. And then you put this other bracket on top of there. And then we have a bearing washer so it doesn't dig into the bracket that you put on top of that. Here that is. And then we got a couple more washers just to protect the bearing. And then the other inch and an eighth nut. You use that same super long socket. And you'll see it's gonna pull that liner right out of the block. And when it does, you have to loosen it back up to take the bracket off. And it'll, it'll fall back down a little bit, but it won't be seated like it was before. And really what you're doing is you're, you're breaking the, uh, the O-ring seal on that liner. As you'll see, there's only a, uh, a single O-ring that seals that liner in there on these C-11s and C-13s. And uh, these are pretty common motor. These are in a lot of dump trucks, tour buses, uh, some motor homes. I think this is about a 400 horsepower engine. You can see the, uh, the lifters there on the right side. Pick this heavy piece of crap up. It, these weigh about uh, 35 pounds. With the tool in there, it's probably about 40 pounds. So it takes a takes a little bit of grunt to get that sucker out of there. There you go. That's the uh, that's the liner, cylinder liner. You can see that blue O-ring right in the middle. That's what seals the coolant, which surrounds the top of the liner, right there, from getting in with your oil. And then it seals on the top by compression, just kind of like a, a fitting. There's just metal to metal. And there's your rod. Hope you liked the video.